this on? There we go. Hi, my name is Laura Armstrong. I'm the executive director of La Casa Hogar. Who's heard of La Casa Hogar? All right. What does Hogar mean? Home. So how does that work? The house home. Anybody know? What's a Casa Hogar? Eva, you want to help me out? <laughs> Casa Hogar in Mexico is actually um, a word for a place where orphans go. And we are not an orphanage. We don't have beds. We, people don't live at La Casa Hogar. But um, in many ways, I think we, we share the same feeling of seeking belonging and family as orphanages do. And I think there's some more trivia. The giraffe in Spanish is? <laughs> Elephant is? <laughs> All right. And hippopotamus is? Every day, hundreds of families at La Casa Hogar are strengthened, educated, and connected. Some through the Early Learning Center and Parent Education, where they learn about STEM, science, technology, engineering, and math. Others connect through women's leadership and English classes. Or they take pre-GED classes to prepare for their GED. Health and nutrition, driver's education, and computer literacy are also options. We cook together, too. So far, I've learned how to make a mean guacamole, salsa, tortillas from scratch, pozole, a corn-based spicy chili stew, and even mole from Doña Salsa from Oaxaca. My family at La Casa Hogar includes our staff, our students, our volunteers, our donors, our advocates. In the citizenship program, we learn together about U.S. history and civics, some of us, who were born U.S. citizens, put our own knowledge to the test about U.S. history, civics. Maybe you're going to do this, too, as you see questions and answers scroll through on the slides behind me. I learn and rediscover constantly how many privileges I have because I was born a U.S. citizen. With my family at La Casa Hogar, I celebrate culture and differences and languages and traditions. But moreover, through our differences, I see our similarities. I see our moms who want success, health, education, and love for our babies. I see our young children sharing with each other, teasing one another, playing with one another, laughing with one another. I see hardworking parents who work full-time jobs and then go to school after that. We all work together and help each other. Pretty good team. But that's what family is, right? A shared identity, a shared life. I actually like to say that families just do life together. My biological family lives far from me, some in Arizona, some in Washington, D.C., and some in Connecticut. So at La Casa Hogar, I find a different family, a bicultural, bilingual family that I do life with every day. I advocate for my family members, and they advocate for me. I listen to my family members, and they listen to me. I disagree with my family members, and yes, they definitely disagree with me. And we grow together, build together, learn together, and create a stronger valley together. We gather and walk, sometimes long distances from Granger to Yakima, like this May, in support of what we believe in, in support of equity and access for all of our family members, not just some. Many people in Yakima have their biological families here. Many people are starting new families. Many are transplants and have left our biological families elsewhere. And some of us, sadly, have lost our families. But Yakima is special because we have so much diversity, and we're all trying to figure out this messy question of how do we be one family? As a transplant, I had no choice but to find family. And gratefully, I was welcomed, and I found a, diver a diverse, bilingual, fun-loving, big family here. La Casa's mission is to connect and educate Latina families 
to transform lives in our Yakima Valley. I'm convinced that this transformation will happen when we as a valley expand our definition of family. Right now in our country, and especially because it's election season, there is a lot of talk about the United States and who's in that U.S. family. In other words, who can be a U.S. citizen? Who can live here? And ultimately, who should belong here? I won't start shooting on anybody, um, or, or who should or who shouldn't, but instead I will tell you who is currently allowed. The path to U.S. citizenship is a little narrow in my opinion. It means first having a green card or a lawful permanent residency status. How do people get this status? Well, they have to fit into a variety of guidelines, and there are many options to get a green card, but all are very specific. And if one does not fit into those guidelines or requirements, he or she cannot get a green card, which means he or she cannot become a U.S. citizen. People with green cards then, generally, will wait five years to apply for citizenship. Again, every case is different, but that's a general rule. After they learn 100 facts about U.S. history and civics, fill out a 20-page application, which includes some questions about potential Nazi involvement, genocide, other pretty contentious topics, pay $680 and pay any legal fees, pass a written, spoken, reading and listening English test, then they may be able to become a U.S. citizen. For those who do not fit the criteria for a green card, there isn't another option to citizenship. There is one more option, though, for work authorization. That's called DACA, Deferred Action for Childhood Arrivals, DACA. This allows young people who were brought by their parents to the U.S. to have legal authorization to work but it's not a path to U.S. citizenship. Who knows the answer <laughs> before reading it? So how do I know all this information? People often ask me this because I was born a U.S. citizen. Well, my family members taught me. I was born a U.S. citizen, but some of my family in Yakima, they weren't. And they lived these realities, and in a way, through them, I do too. Sometimes it's pretty tiring because these are tough situations with no real answers and no real solutions. But I have to say I'd rather continue doing life with my multicultural, alive, warm family members, even when we're trying to solve messy problems together, than doing it without them. So like I said, La Casa's mission is to connect and educate Latina families to transform lives in our Yakima Valley. I'm convinced that this transformation will happen when we expand our definition of family.